If you're in Atlanta looking for cash flow real estate, I am very glad you clicked on this link because we are going to be talking about that and much more today. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise, and I'm talking to you guys, you guys out there in Atlanta. Why am I talking to everybody in Atlanta about cash flow real estate? Because my client, the man of the hour, his name is Carlo, and he lives in Atlanta, and he wants cash flow. But you know what Carlo's problem is? Carlo's got a problem, and I bet a lot of you have that problem too. Carlo can't get the type of cash flow returns that he wants in Atlanta. The Atlanta market, it's freaking smoking right now, dude. I mean, pretty much every market in the United States right now is smoking. I mean, it's the prices are through the roof, right? You got the post-COVID fallout. Builders are getting creamed. We got lumber shortages, blah, 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 blah. blah. Real estate, boo, to the moon, man. Real estate is to the moon. I'm tripping over these cords here. Real estate is, is really expensive. So if you're in a very competitive market like Atlanta, Cash flow investors are getting squeezed, man. You're getting squeezed out of the returns. What do you do? Well, you do what Carlo did. You come to me where I help you guys target incredibly cheap, low-cost rental properties in the most cash flow friendly markets across the United States. And then my team, we act as your boots on the ground team. Property management, maintenance, construction, insurance, title, leasing, a any and everything, right? We, we are essentially your full-time boots-on-the-ground resource in that market, right? And if you're wondering, like, what type of pricing, today we're going to be talking about a house. It's only going to require Carlo to spend $12,500 of his money, right? Where else in America can you get started in real estate for only $12,500? That's what I'm talking about, folks. We're going to jump into all those numbers and more right after this commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's jump right into the property now that you guys are all fitted with your new clothing attire, right? 331 4th Street, Elyria, 44035. 23 days on the market at a price point of 64900 Now, if this particular property had a market rent paying tenant and it was only 64,900 this thing would be long gone it would have been flo flown off the shelves right what we have here is the opportunity to buy a property at a deeply discounted rate because the situation the selling of the property is not ideal right we have a long term tenant in this property this property, it's, you know, it's a little dated, right? You got the tenant. They got a lot of stuff, okay? It's pretty cluttered. It doesn't show well, right? These are all things that are good for us as real estate investors, right? Nobody looks that's going to, you know, want to buy a house. Nobody looks at this picture and goes, whoa, dude, that's what I'm talking about. I envisioned buying a home, and this picture is what came to mind, right? Like, that doesn't happen, okay? So these things, though, for us as investors, they are all good, right? There's only two kinds of people that could buy a house, right? Two kinds of people are going to buy this house. Owner-occupants, people that want to live there, but there's a tenant in there. It looks grimy, cluttered, ugh, doesn't work for them. So half the buyer base gone. It's going to help keep the price low. Next, we have investors like you. Anybody watching this, you're an investor. You want to make money, but the price is not that attractive to you guys because the tenant that's currently there cluttering this up, making all the owner-occupants not want it. They've been there forever. I don't know how long exactly, but a long friggin' time. And they're only paying five twenty-five, which is crazy because the market rent on this thing, as it sits, as a 2-1, is actually 900 a month. If you're getting 900 a month under your fixed and variable uh, expense estimates, you should be netting 
$5,118 a year, and that's with you saving money for future vacancy, saving money for future CapEx, saving money for future repairs and maintenance, right? I got five forty dollars a year being saved towards those things, right? So each one of those line items, five forty, right? So that's, you know, $15, $80, uh, like $16.20 a year that I'm not counting as an actual return, but you will realize that now. Keep that in a bank account to save because eventually you'll get a turnover. Eventually you'll have to do CapEx, right? This home, nothing's coming to you new, right? No brand new furnace, no new hot water tank, no roof. Roof, 30 years. That's how long they last. You're probably in the last 10 years of that, I bet, right? That's a $7,000 bill. Furnace, they last 30 years. They cost about three grand. Don't think you got a new furnace. Hot water tank, they, they last about 15 years to cost a grand, right? Don't think you got a new one of those either, right? So you're saving because eventually those big ticket items are going to come, right? But all of that, right, the fact that owner occupants can't buy it, the fact that the current rent ain't 900, it's only five and a quarter, that's what allows the price to be low, right? Because, again, it's 64.9. It should have flew, right? It's worth more, right? Should have flow off, flown off the shelves, but it didn't. And I think we could even get that down even further, okay? They're asking 64.9. I want to lowball these folks. I want to try to pick it up for you at 50. If we pick it up for you at 50, you put down 12,500, the bank puts down 37 and a half with a $900 tenant if you got the existing tenant in there all the way up to 900, that would be a 26% cash on cash return or a 10.2 cap, right? Amazing deal. Makes a lot of sense. Now, let's talk about a couple other things, right? First of all, let's talk about expectations. Going from five and a quarter to 900 with the exact same existing tenant, is it possible? Yes. The best way to do it, the most likely way to get you there is to slowly increase that rent, 50 bucks a year, right? You don't just want to basically double the rent because odds are good the tenant's going to move out. And as we've seen from the pictures, it's a dated home. That would require you to probably put in another ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to get it ready to rock to get that new market rate tenant. But... If you go slow, you got a good chance of keeping them in there without having to spend that money, and you'll just make more cash flow as the rent goes up until you ultimately get to your goal. Here is the other thing I want to talk to you about. The reason the market rent is 900 is because it's two bed, one bath, okay? This is a big house, though. If you haven't noticed, this house is actually pretty freaking huge. It's actually a 1,400-square-foot house. Most of the three bedroom, one-bathroom homes you see in the Cleveland market are only 1,200 square feet. This sucker is 1,400, okay? This is a huge house. Two ones, normal two ones in the Cleveland market are usually like half the size of this thing. What's going on is up top here, right? Unfinished, right? We could have an extra bedroom, right? You finish off that space, you could be getting your rent up to over a thousand dollars a month because the home is so big but of course that's going to require money we would need to see the inspection report to see exactly where we're standing but don't think you're doing that for probably less than 20 grand right so that's just something to consider in the future but all told where we're at right now i think this would be a solid investment and i think picking it up at such a discounted price while taking advantage of the current seller situation, right? They're, they're literally marketing their property improperly to every type of buyer, right? Every type of buyer, they're, they're sending them the wrong message, right? I'm an owner-occupant buyer. I want to move into a home with my family that's fresh and clean. Well, I can't do that here because there's a friggin' tenant. I'm Mr. Landlord. I want to make a bunch of money on my investment. I want to return on my dollar. Well, it's not that great right now because you're renting the house to somebody for basically half of what you should, right? So because they're doing that, that allows us to come in and hammer hard and try to pick this sucker up at a huge discount, getting it for 50 k meaning we only have to spend $12,500 of our money. This, folks, this is how you make money in real estate, forcing equity, buying value-add deals. Getting situations that are not, getting into investment situations that are not, you know, right there, packaged and beautiful and ready for you. If you want to only buy things that are packaged and beautiful and ready for you, folks, just buy traditional turnkey. But you all know you're paying a premium for that, right? If you want to dig down and get deep, get dirty, and really create some value for yourself and your net worth, 
These are what the deals look like, okay? They don't look beautiful. They don't look sexy. But that is the point. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.